So in this video, we're going to start diving into using octane lights in an interior scene. And for this video, I'm using the Space Cantina underscore interior 01.ma scene. So in this scene, our little robot has become a bartender, and we've got a little patron here and his little space helmet on the bar and a couple of drinks and some nice lighting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide all of these lights so we can kind of start from the beginning um, and just throw some octane lights in here and see what happens. So I'm going to switch quickly to uh, render viewport 2.0. So the way I have this scene organized, a lot of the lighting in the bar is being created through planes that have emissive shaders applied to them. We're going to talk more about emissive shaders a bit later on. Uh, right now I just want to talk about standard octane lights. So I'm going to turn these off. So what I'll do is I'm going to select this object right here, this overhead light. If you take a look in the outliner just to give you an idea of how the scene works, I have bar geo in one group and then a bunch of subgroups including these light planes. So a lot of these overhead lights here are in this light plane group. And uh, if I go into Hypershade, and I'm just going to, with that light plane selected, I'm going to choose Graph, Materials, and Selected Objects. You can see if I switch over to Octane, you can see those lights, those surfaces casting light in the scene. So with the um, shader that's applied to this graph in the uh, Hypershade, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what's going on. So we have a light emissive, it's an octane shader, an octane texture emission, and then a sort of yellowish texture being plugged into the efficiency. So let's just set this down to like black to turn it off for the moment. So you can see there's still some light in the scene. We've got lights on the robot. If I switch over to the uh, perspective view, you can see I have a few other objects in here that are casting light and I also have sunlight coming through the window. So if I go outside the bar, you can see there's a lot of windows and openings for lights to come in. And then I have some, uh, have some lights here in the boots and on some of the other machinery. But let's just focus on the bar for the moment. So let's go back to uh, the bar cam. So you can see it's looking kind of dim in here with just a little bit of lighting coming in. There is one other surface in here that's casting light that I don't want to interfere with the lights that we're going to add to the scene. So I'm going to switch to the perspective view. You can see that at the bottom of the robot here we have this kind of glowing orange or yellow ball. So I'm going to select it and go into the attribute editor, find the tab for the shader which is called Barbot Glow and go down to emission, click on this arrow, and I'm going to set the power to zero so it's not adding any light to the scene and not confusing us as to where the light's coming from. Okay, so now let's switch to viewport 2.0 and I'm going to add an octane light to the scene and talk about its settings. So there's a few ways you can add an octane light to the scene. You can go to the uh, octane menu and under octane environment you can add a light this way or you can go to the Octane Render Shelf, click on this icon right here, this will add a light. So let's switch to the Move tool and you can see that it appears at the origin. So I'm going to move it over here so it's above the bar. Let's see right here. So it's represented as a sphere. If you add a light to a scene and you don't see the sphere, Make sure that under the show menu in the viewport you have locators turned on. If locators is turned off, you won't see the light. So make sure locators is on. The other thing you want to double check, if I switch to Octane Render here, you can see there's a light casting light into the scene. If I go to my kernel settings, I'm going to click on this arrow in the render settings next to kernel. If I set this to direct light, in this particular scene the lighting is going to look a lot different with direct lighting than it does with path tracing. Path tracing is going to be more physically accurate, a little bit slower but more accurate, so I'm going to use that for this scene for the moment. And now I'll select my light and let's take a look at the settings. So here in the attribute editor we have the settings for this light. So clearly I can turn it on or off using this option. I also can switch between sphere or plane so let's switch back to sphere for a second. 
and we can adjust the size of the sphere using these fields right here. So if it's a sphere, we only need to worry about the radius, and to adjust the radius, we can set the X field here. So if I set this to two, we get a much bigger light, and it's gonna cast much softer edge shadows because the light's coming from a larger area. So let's set this to one for now. If on the other hand, I set this to plane, then we can see that we get this kind of strip right here, and I can use the X and Y fields to adjust the size of the plane. So if I set X and Y to both one, we get a square area light. Note that there's a little yellow arrow here on one side of the light indicating where the light's coming from. So if I rotate the light, I want to pay attention to that arrow, which will let me know how the light's going to come out of that planar surface. Let's switch this back to sphere for the moment. Spheres, of course, doesn't matter how you rotate them because the light's going to come out in all directions. Next thing we have to adjust is the power. So this is the amount of energy that is being put out by the light. So if I set this down to one, we're going to clearly have a much dimmer light. If I set it up to two, or say five, we start to get brighter lights. Let's set it up to 20 for this, for this case. It's not too bright, but bright enough to see. If we want to adjust the color of the light, we have two different ways for doing that. We can either use temperature or the color swatch. So for temperature, if color type is set to temperature, I can adjust this value. Higher values are going to give me a cooler light. So you can see the light is kind of pale blue. And lower values are going to give me a warmer light. So you can see the light is now kind of a yellowish glow. Um, if I set this to color, then I can use this color swatch to kind of interactively change the color of the, of the light. A weird green light, which looks terrible. Uh, so let's set this back to pink. And I'm actually going to set color type back to temperature. Now this normalize option works when color type is set to temperature. What it means is that if this is on, then the temperature of the light is not going to affect the brightness of the light. So in other words, if I set this down to a very warm color, it's still going to be just as bright as if I set it to a very cool color. But if normalize is off, then the brightness of the light is affected by the temperature of the light. So cooler lights are going to be brighter, and warmer lights are going to be dimmer. So that's what that does. Let's turn this back on to normalize, and set this back to kind of a warm light. The surface brightness means that the brightness of the light will be affected by the size. So if this is off, and I set the size down to, say, 0.1, the shadows will be crisper and kind of different in terms of their shape because the light's coming from a smaller area, but the brightness won't be affected. But if I turn surface brightness on, then we're going to get a dimmer light. It's not going to be as bright because it's a smaller light. And if I increase this to, say, 2, then we get a very bright light without, affecting the, without changing the power or the temperature. Let's turn off surface bright for a second and set this back to 1. Some of these are fairly self-explanatory. For instance, visible and diffuse. If I turn this off, then the light is only going to affect the specular uh, highlights in the scene. It's not going to be seen in the diffuse surfaces. Likewise, if I turn off visible and specular, and I leave visible and diffuse on, then the light is not going to show up in the uh, reflective surfaces. It's not going to show up in the specular highlights. So with the, both of these on, you'll get a much more physically accurate result. Cast shadows, I think, is fairly self-explanatory. If I turn that off, then the light no longer casts shadows. And if I turn it on, then we'll see it is casting shadows. Double-sided is an option that you use when the geometry type is set to plane. So if I set this to plane, the light only comes out of one direction of that planar surface. If I turn on double-sided, then the light's going to come out of both sides of the plane. So you can see it's reflected on the alien's face as well as on the robot in the back of the bar. The transparent emission has to do when the um, when you're using uh, an emissive shader on geometry. So we'll come back to transparent emission uh, later on. The efficiency controls the strength of the light uh, over distance. So, in other words, if I increase the efficiency, the light is going to get much stronger, even though the power is the same. 
real world values, the default value of 0.25 is closer to a real world value. So if you want to simulate physically accurate lights, you can leave this at 2.5. If you want to bring it down to maybe make like a, like a candle flame that might be extremely bright in the area that's close to the light, but with a very fast fall off, maybe you reduce the efficiency can help with that. Let's set, this, let's set that back at 0.25. Efficiency is also useful if you want to use a texture. So if this was going to be like a computer screen or something like that, casting light or a TV screen, casting light into the scene, you can click on this checker box here and add an image texture using the octane textures. You want to use octane textures, not Maya textures. An octane texture, you could use an image texture in the efficiency uh, to create the uh, look of a uh, TV screen or something like that casting light into the scene. Sampling rate, of course, is going to allow you to devote more samples to the rendering of specific lights. Opacity works with the visibility of the light. Let's set this back to sphere for a moment and I'll leave it power 20, that's fine. I'll go down to visibility and turn on camera visibility and deselect the light for a second. So now you can see that the light appears in the scene as this big white sphere. If I turn off camera visibility and deselect it, then we don't actually see the light. You can see here in the viewport that we have this blue sphere. It's very dim and hard to see, but that represents the light in the scene. If you're rendering this or batch rendering it, you wouldn't see that in the render. That's just for working in the viewport. Uh, but you can see that camera visibility controls whether or not it's visible in the scene. If it's turned on so that you can actually see it, then you can use an opacity slider to control the opacity of the light surface itself. So I bring this down, you can see the light is really dim, even though it's cast in the same amount of light. So those two settings work together. Shadow visibility uh, seems kind of strange. This does not mean the shadows that are being cast by the light, but if I had another light above this one and the light is casting light onto this light, if shadow visibility is turned on, then you would see a shadow cast by this light, which might seem kind of strange. Uh, but in some cases, that's a more physically accurate result. So you could probably turn that off. It's not going to affect the shadows cast by the light, just shadows cast by one light hitting this light. Hopefully that makes sense. The rest of these settings down here have to do with uh, whether you're going to use render layers or baking the lighting um, and other uh, options that we'll talk about in a later video devoted to those uh, features of Octane. But the settings that I've described right here will get you up and running working with uh, Octane lights quickly in your scene. So thanks again for watching.